Adding a CNC machine to your tool arsenal is a big decision and it can be overwhelming if you are just getting started. Today we will go through the main criteria to consider when buying your hobby level CNC machine so you get exactly what you need without overpaying. I'm Davis and I spend most of my time designing CNC projects from small gadgets to full size furniture. So I thought I would share the criteria I used when purchasing machine for the Aribobox workshop. Since I'm not getting sponsored by any CNC manufacturer or distributor, you will get my completely honest and unbiased opinion. So the first and most important question is, what do you actually plan to make? Having clear project ideas will help you match the CNC size and specifications to your needs. You will want to know the dimensions of the largest project you are planning to make as well as the materials you will use the most often. This determines both the size and capabilities of machine. In general, you want the CNC's work surface slightly larger than your biggest project. If you plan to make small projects like signs, cutting boards or 3D engravings, you don't really need a large machine. But if you plan to make furniture, you will need something much bigger. But it doesn't mean that you automatically have to go for the biggest machine you can afford. If you're just getting started or not planning to run it as a business, I recommend choosing a CNC with a work surface width that matches the standard sheet material width, usually 122 centimeters or 48 inches. If your machine has open ends at both sides, you can use something called tiling. Cutting a long project in sections by sliding the material through and aligning it for each cut. This can make a smaller machine much more versatile. Once you know the size of the machine you will need, you also have to make sure it can handle the materials you will use. This comes down to three main things. Frame rigidity, drive mechanism and spindle. Let's break them down one by one. In the hobby CNC world you will typically see aluminum extrusion frames, sheet metal or plate frames, cast aluminum or iron frames, plywood or MDF frames and hybrid frames. Each has pros and cons. I strongly recommend avoiding plywood or MDF frames if possible. They wear out faster and are easily affected by workshop humidity. But if you only work with soft materials and precision isn't critical, they can still be an affordable starting point. The frame's main task is to hold the workpiece and the motion system without any flex. A bigger cutting area means a greater chance of flex and slower optimal feed rates, unless the frame is very rigid. Next, let's look at the drive system, the part that moves the X, Y and Z axis. Common options are belt and pulleys, lead screws, ball screws and rack and pinion gears, which are rare in small hobby machines. Most entry-level hobby CNC machines use mostly belts or lead screws. Belts are inexpensive, they allow high travel speeds and run quietly. The downside is they can stretch, requiring occasional recalibration. And if you push it too hard, it can skip a teeth mid-operation and ruin the part. You can reduce the skipping by slowing down the feed rates or taking lighter passes, but that reduces the efficiency. Lead screws and ball screws are more rigid and they don't have the stretching issue. Ball screws are more superior when it comes to precision and speed, but they are usually found in more expensive machines. If the budget allows, I would definitely go for the ball screws instead of the belt drive, but for smaller lighter jobs, the belts will do just fine. The last thing about the CNC hardware that we really have to pay attention to is the spindle. Most CNC kits come without one, so it's important to know what to look for when getting one for your setup. The first thing is power and torque. It's important that the spindle is strong enough for the materials you will be using the most. For woodworking and soft materials, 1.5 kW spindle would do just fine. But for more aggressive cuts or aluminum, you want to have at least 2.2 kW spindle. The next thing that matters is the collet size. It's important to double check what size collets your spindle supports and what diameter router bits you will be able to attach to your setup. The next thing you have to pay attention to is electrical requirements. 
It's good if you can just plug the spindle in the wall socket and use it without upgrading the wiring in the workshop. And the last thing about the spindles, the cooling type. In general, there are two types, air-cooled and water-cooled spindles. The air-cooled ones are less expensive, they are easier to set up and have less moving parts, but they are louder than water-cooled spindles and are less effective on longer jobs. Using palm routers as an alternative for the spindle is an option. In fact, we are using one for our CNC setup. Until now, it has worked well. The palm routers will be louder, they are not built for continuous work, and they are less powerful when compared to the CNC spindles. So now we have covered the hardware. Let's talk about what you will actually get in your CNC kit and what you will still need to buy. Most CNC kits include a frame, motion systems and electronics. It's enough to assemble the CNC, but it's not enough to get started right away. Here is what you will likely need to add. The first one is router bits and collets. I recommend finding the router bits you will be using for your first project and then finding the matching collets. This way you don't pay for the stuff that you won't be using. Getting budget friendly router bits from Amazon is a smart choice since you will probably break most of them while figuring out the feeds and speeds. You can always upgrade to better quality bits once you get more experience. To be honest, I'm still using the router bits from Amazon for most of my prototype work. They are less expensive and perform just fine. Once we have the router bits figured out, you will need to attach the workpiece to your CNC's work surface. For this, you will need a spoil board. A work surface sized MDF board or plywood will do just fine. And to secure the workpiece to the CNC machine, you basically have three options. The first option is clamps. They are reliable, but they will require T-tracks or threaded inserts in your spoil board. Then you can use double sided tape, which is great for thinner flat parts, but they can lose grip if there is too much dust or vibration during the CNC operations. My favorite option is using screws. They are cheap, strong and effective, as long as you don't cut into them. Once you have secured the workpiece to your CNC's work surface, you will want to add the dust collection system, otherwise the dust will be flying everywhere. For this you will need a dust shoe and a basic dust collection system. At the beginning the shop whack will do. You can always upgrade to proper dust collection system later. When cutting on the CNC router, it's also important to think about the safety. Having hearing protection and glasses is strongly recommended. And if you are working with MDF boards, I would recommend getting face masks as well. To track the quality of your cuts, you will need calipers, preferably the digital ones. They will help you to check the slot fits, cutting depth and overall accuracy. To help you get the best results in terms of the precision, I would also recommend getting a touch probe to simplify and speed up zeroing the z-axis. It's not essential for your first cuts, but it's a great update that improves consistency, especially if you run multi-tool operations. Now hardware is only half of the problem. Your CNC is useless without software. First you will need the control software. This makes your CNC move. Some kits include it, others don't. Then you will need CAM software. This creates toolpaths and G-codes from your design. And obviously the design software, where you create the actual project. All three of them must be compatible, so you can design, create toolpaths and send them to the CNC machine without headaches. Some CAM software offers free versions for hobby use with limitations, while others requires payment from day one. I personally use Fusion 360 because it combines design and CAM tools and the free version has all the essentials for hobby use. Once you have narrowed down the potential CNC machines, it's important to check if there is an active Facebook group, forum or Discord for your machine. It's often the fastest way to get help, especially if you have a specific problem or run into unpredictable problems. Also, I will look into the manufacturer's warranty and the replacement part availability. You want them to arrive promptly so your projects don't get stalled. Also consider how quickly the manufacturer responds to support requests. 
Don't be afraid to send them a couple of emails and see how fast they get back to you. And if you are satisfied with the hardware, informed about the software and confident about the support channels, make sure you have enough room for the CNC machine in your workshop and enough room to move around it. Also double check the wiring for the spindle. You probably don't want to rewire the whole workshop. The last thing, be sure you can manage the dust and the noise from the CNC. They tend to be way louder than many expect. So in the conclusion, when you are looking for the CNC machine for your workshop, set clear requirements, stick to them and avoid paying for features that you won't be using. And ideally pick the machine that can grow with you. Many offer upgrades that you can add to your setup later. And be ready to invest time in learning both the hardware and the software. The CNC is incredibly rewarding, but it does have a learning curve. If you found value in this video, please consider subscribing. Every now and then we post videos of cool and useful builds you can make on your hobby CNC machine. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.